Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for the top 10 findings of 2023. We're going to get started, and I will now hand it over to our presenters today, Megan Lazovic, Vice President at Edison Research, and Laura Ivey, Director of Research at Edison Research. Thank you, Laura. Hey, Megan, it's Laura. good to see you. <laughs> good to see you. So I know we said we'd wear festive outfits, but I think we can go bigger next time. I, you know, I did. I, I will tell you, I, I did. I chickened out at the end. I did have the llama sweater, so I went with a, something a little Well, me less too. Crazy. I think I, I said I was wearing a an ugly sweater, but I, I don't know if it's quite ugly enough. So next year, I like it. uglier, I promise. It did, that's the goal <laughs> for next year. Well, we made it. We made it to the end of this year. We want to welcome everyone. Thank you all for joining us this afternoon for our year in recap for our top 10 findings of 2023. I'm Laura Ivey, Director of Research. And I'm Megan Lazovic, Vice President at Edison Research. And today we're gonna to serve as your webinar host, uh, but the best part of today really is that you're going to see many of the faces behind the findings here at Edison. Um, these are people who conceptualize the studies, conduct interviews, crunch the data. We're gonna hear from them today. We had a lot of findings in contention for the list this year. So we want to remind you that what you see, these aren't presented in order of importance necessarily, but just in a way that really tells the story of research in 2023. And any good researcher knows about incentives. So we have a special incentive today for one lucky person who's joining us. At the end of the webinar, we'll randomly select a winner to receive their own copy of our brand new book. Sound data, the state of audio in 50 charts. It's hot off the presses. And we're excited to share the work uh, that we have in all of these glossy pages. Yeah, I'm just going to point out, it is so hot off the presses that I don't even have my own copy yet. I'm a little jealous. I should be getting mine soon. Uh, we are all incredibly proud of this project. If you've subscribed to our weekly insights email, you know every Wednesday we email a data point with a graphic. Um, sound data is a compilation of 50 weekly insights findings from various custom studies, our syndicated data sets, infinite dial, Edison podcast metrics, share of ear, along with full color graphs. So if you are not a recipient of the book today, we will provide information. Information will be forthcoming about how you can get your own copy. Yes, we'll get that info out to you. Yeah. Uh, we're excited. We hope you are too. Um, so today, as we reveal our top findings, please drop in any questions in that Q&A box. We have some folks standing by to answer your questions. But I also encourage you to chat amongst yourselves in the chat box. Maybe you can start by doing that, by um, adding in your guesses as to what makes our list today. Let's get into the data, Laura. Uh, this first finding is from Nicole. Nicole does an amazing amount of work with the Infinite Dial, which is the longest running survey in the US of digital consumer behavior. And her finding comes from the Infinite Dial 2023, a study we did with support from sponsors, Amazon Music, Wondery, and Art19. Twenty twenty three marked the twenty fifth anniversary of Edison Research's annual study, the Infinite Dial. So it's only fitting that online audio listening reached a milestone as well. This year, we reported that seventy five percent of Americans aged twelve plus listened to online audio in the month prior to us contacting them. That's around two hundred and fourteen million Americans. This chart is one of my favorites because it shows just how long running Infinite Dial is. Let's look to the left of the chart, where it starts all the way back in the year 2000, when Christina and Brittany ruled the airwaves. Back then, only 5% of Americans 12 plus listened to online audio in the last month. And by online audio, we really meant listening to radio stations over the internet, since that was really the only way to listen to online audio back in that time. It took a few years, but technological advances such as the iPhone came in and helped give online audio the boost it needed to grow. And grow it did, from a handful of listeners at the start of the century to now three quarters of the population, all in less than 25 years. Thank you, Nicole. I respect the fact that Nicole has favorite graphs, as most of us do here at Edison. Uh, we're going to be hearing more about online audio consumption from other points in our list this year. But finding number nine is from a custom study that you worked on with our friends at Amazon Music. And for this project, you and the team studied some mega trends surrounding audio. 
Yes, for this report, Edison and Amazon Ads reviewed a decade of audio data to identify some of the biggest trends in audio over time. So I'd like to introduce one of the talented researchers from that team to present finding number nine, manager of research, Karina Farias. Hi, I'm Karina Farias, Manager of Research at Edison Research. New audio technologies have brought audio listening home, and that trend is likely to continue in the near future. That's one of the findings from 2023's Audio and Evolution from Amazon Ads and Edison Research. The report closely reviews the past decade of audio research and identifies key drivers for the evolution of audio. According to the study, a majority or 58% of audio listening now occurs in the home and largely through connected devices. Time spent listening to audio in the home grew by 21% since 2015 and has remained consistent since 2020, even after listeners have returned to pre-pandemic routines. This trend is likely to continue with 42% of consumers reporting they listen to audio content more frequently in the home now than they did pre-pandemic. Since gaining prominence in the 2010s, streaming audio has provided listeners the opportunity to enjoy content digitally at scale. This change in distribution was the beginning of an evolution across all audio listening, but especially in the home. You know, listening location plays such a part in how we choose to consume audio, what we're doing in those locations, what devices are in those locations. I tend to listen to radio station streams through my smart speakers at home. What about you? Well, it definitely depends on the task for me. So if I'm if I'm with my family, yes, we're listening to music through a smart speaker. But if I'm doing a boring task like the dishes or the laundry, then I'm listening to podcasts or audiobooks through my phone. Maybe I spend a little too much time with my phone in the home to my family's chagrin. <laughs> that is okay. Same here. Same here. And we're going to talk more about spoken word audio consumption in just a minute as well. Um, the next finding is from someone who is always behind the screen, crunching the numbers, fielding data requests. So it is nice to have him on screen today to introduce him to all of you. So here with finding number eight is Matt Brownsword. Hi, my name is Matthew Brownsword and I'm a Director of Data Analysis at Edison Research. Here at Edison, one of the main projects I work on is Sharevir. Through Sharevir, we have been able to track linear audio and on-demand audio consumption and track each's share of daily audio for almost a decade. Examples of linear audio include radio over the air, radio streams, or services like Pandora's free radio service. Examples of on-demand audio content include paid streaming services, podcasts, or owned music. On-demand audio content is any audio you can access whenever you want, and you can choose what to listen to. Linear audio presents those choices to you. Daily on-demand audio content consumption has passed linear audio consumption for the first time. To put that in perspective, in 2015, Linear audio content accounted for 69% of all daily audio time. However, in Q2 2023, linear audio content only accounted for 49.7%, while on-demand daily audio content jumped from 31% in 2015 to 50.3% in 2023. Thank you, Matt. Uh, I appreciated the little Edison research graphic on your whiteboard <laughs> in the background. Um, I, I'm wondering if it was special for today. Uh, so our first three findings have focused on audio, but there's another side to the business here at Edison, perhaps you know, election research. Edison Research is the sole provider of election data, race projections, and, and analysis to ABC News, CBS News, CNN, and NBC News. And since 20. Uh, 2004, Edison Research and the National Election Pool have conducted the only national exit polls in the United States. Yeah, we've already started gearing up for election year here. We'll be in full swing very shortly, um, covering many primary races leading up to the main event next year. So just as a reminder, um, you know, voting in the U.S. is anonymous. So the way that we understand anything about the electorate in the United States is through surveys such as exit polls. 
So here now to present our finding number seven is one of the key team members on our election staff. Drew, what do you have for us this year? Happy holidays. I'm Drew Malakowitz, and I'm Senior Director of Political Research here at Edison Research. Ever since the Dobbs decision by the U.S. Supreme Court back in June of 2022, the battle over abortion access has played a huge role in elections across the country. Uh, this off-year election was no different, with Ohio being ground zero. This past November, voters in Ohio had the opportunity to vote on a con constitutional amendment that, amongst other provisions, would have established an individual right to abortion access. Overall, the amendment passed with 57% voting yes in favor, and in our uh, exit poll in conjunction with the national election pool, we were able to dig deeper into that top-line result to reveal some interesting differences by education level. We often discuss political differences between those with a college degree and those without a college degree. But, as our graphic shows, that binary distinction completely misses that in Ohio, those who attend college but do not obtain their degree vote much more like those with a degree than those with only a high school education. This some college, no degree category made up 23% of our overall responding group. Adjusting the comparison groups to any college versus only high school tells a more clear story. Among those with any education beyond high school, whether an associate's, bachelor's, advanced degree, or our some college but no degree group, 60% of them voted in favor of the measure, while among those with no formal education past high school, only 41% voted in favor of the abortion measure. The fact that there's educational divides in public opinion is absolutely no surprise. But as our observation in Ohio shows, it's not always as simple as those with a degree versus those without a degree. Keep this in mind next year, when both abortion and political differences by education level will certainly remain at the forefront of our political discourse. Thank you, Drew. Our next finding on our list is an international one. Now this, this study we're going to talk about, this one took you overseas to present at the World DAB gathering, at one of the World DAB, DAB gatherings. So Megan is going to share with us point number six. Yes, it was frankly a dream to work with World DAB and present this research in Paris earlier this year. The key finding of that study is radio is an essential part of the in-car experience. Now, that's true in many countries all, over, all around the world, but the 2023 Dashboard Dialogue study from Edison Research and World DAB found that with all the, of the new choices on the dashboard, radio is number one in the car in France, Germany, and the UK. In this study of new and prospective car buyers in those three countries, we found that 61% said they listen to radio in the car most often. That's more people choosing to spend time with radio than those choosing online music services, their own music collection, and other in-car audio sources combined. The results are similar when you look at each country alone. Radio is the most used service in the car in UK, France, and Germany. And radio factors into buying decisions among these consumers. 91% of recent and prospective car buyers said that it was important that their new vehicle has FM or DAB radio. In addition to the survey, I spent two lovely days in a car park outside of London. And I say car park now instead of parking lot because I went to London. Um, Anyway, I was talking to car owners about their listening choices, and my fellow researchers did the same thing in other countries from the study. We learned that audio experience is the key part of a person's satisfaction with their car, and that removing the friction in the in-car audio experience increases a person's satisfaction with their vehicle. It's important that as technology evolves in the car, that uh, radio remains easy to access because radio and the car, it turns out, are linked in the minds of the consumer. And radio is an essential part of the in-car experience. It's fascinating, really. And we've been, we've been talking about this around the office lately about how really radio listening and being in car um, go together. And you know, study after study we do, it shows that that in-car listening environment is just a different universe from, from any other listening location. So uh, really some interesting things. So thank you for sharing that as part of our list. Our next finding is also specific to in-car listening. This one is in the US and is presented by Laura Sylvia. Now, Laura is on our Share of Ear team. She works very closely with her Share of Ear study. And you might not know this, she's also the voice that welcomes you 
to all of our webinars. Hi, I'm Laura Silvia, Vice President of IT at Edison Research, here to present one of our top 10 findings of 2023. Around the third quarter of last year, 2022, our Share of Ears study found that for the first time, audio consumption on mobile devices in the US had passed audio consumption on a radio receiver. As we tracked this data in 2023, we saw that mobile listening had passed radio receiver listening in every location except the car. In the car, it's quite the opposite. This graph shows the radio as the clear winner of the device that gets the largest share of audio time in the car. At the time this finding was released, 58% of listening in car was done on a radio, exceeding listening on a mobile device by two and a half to one. But each time we update the share of ear tracking data, the mobile device chomps away at that margin a little bit more. In 2015, the margin was 62 percentage points, and as of Q2 of this year, it had shrunk to 35. We'll be curious to see if this trend continues to move slowly, or if something comes along that propels the mobile device more quickly to be the device of choice in car, or if the future holds something else entirely. And that's why this is a top 10 finding of 2023. Thank you, Laura. There's a joke somewhere about video games, but I just don't have it. Drop it into the chat Next for time. me, please, somebody. Next time. Uh, <laughs> anyway, in 2023, NPR and Edison Research released the fifth iteration of the Spoken Word Audio Report. And finding number four comes from that study. Here is Edison Research President Larry Rosen on Spoken Word Audio. Hi, I'm Edison President Larry Rosen, and one of the top findings from this year relates to spoken word audio. Data from the spoken word audio report shows that once again this year, the time spent listening to spoken word audio hit another all-time high. And our specific finding comes from this graph, which shows that podcasting is really what's driving those gains. As you can see here in 2014, Podcasting was only accounting for 13% of all the time spent listening to spoken word audio. And now in our most recent update, podcasting is up to 36% of all time spent listening to spoken word audio. We typically hesitate to predict the future, but it seems extremely likely that sometime down the road, perhaps within a couple of years, podcasting will surpass broadcast radio as the top source of spoken word audio listening. This is one of the many great findings you can find in the Spoken Word Audio Report that we publish each year with our friends at NPR. And a quick reminder that after the webinar, we will be posting these findings online with links to the accompanying research so you can explore these studies in detail, such as the Spoken Word Audio Report in full. So let's stick with podcast findings for just a minute. Finding number three comes to us from a colleague who has had an incredibly busy year with Edison Podcast Metrics. Here with finding number three is Melissa Kishi. Hey everyone, I'm Melissa Kishi, Senior Vice President and Lead on Edison's subscription-based podcast product, Edison Podcast Metrics. After four years of providing top podcast rankers in the US, in September, we finally made our debut into the UK market and released the first ever top 25 podcasts in the UK. Edison Podcast Metrics provides subscribers with a quarterly checkup on podcast audiences and what they're listening to, as well as the relative reach of leading podcasts and networks. Our survey-based methodology is not dependent on podcast download data, and it doesn't require podcasts or networks to opt in to be measured. Study participants record a list of all the podcasts they've listened to in the previous week, and then our team codes every response to the appropriate show. This allows us to come up with a ranking of all the podcasts mentioned by our participants. Prior to the public release of the top 25 shows, 
The Edison team had quite a bit of fun asking folks in the UK podcast community to guess their top five shows. So which podcasts top our UK list? And how does the UK list compare to the US list? Let's take a look. Many were right on target with the number one show on both the US and UK lists, The Joe Rogan Experience. We round out the top five with The Diary of a CEO at two, Off Menu at three, Shag Married and Annoyed at four, and That Peter Crouch Podcast at number five. Only three more US-based shows make the top 25, The Daily from the New York Times at 10, Stuff You Should Know from iHeart at 20, and Logan Paul's Impulsive at number 25. The rest are all UK-based titles, with six shows from the BBC led by their daily news podcast, Newscast, at number eight. How might this top 25 change in the future? Follow us to find out. Thank you, Mel. Next up is someone who you may have bumped into in, at a conference or two. Gabe Soto is always making connections with podcasters. And with all of the time he spends studying the platform, he's also making important connections about podcast research. Let's see what he's chosen to highlight this year. Hello, hello, it's that time of year again. The warmth of family get-togethers, the smell of smoky chimneys around the neighborhood, and you can't forget about the gifts. The gifts that everyone is scrambling to buy right now. This is the best time of year for companies to showcase their best products to eco consumers. And my finding of the year highlights one medium that is especially effective with certain segments of the American population. My name is Gabriel Gabriel Soto, and I'm a senior director at Edison Research. And my top finding for 2023 is that diverse audiences are tremendously engaged with podcast advertising. According to Edison's Latino Podcast Listener Report 2023, made possible by LWC Studios, Latina to Latina, Latino Media Network, Libsyn, and SXM Media, half of all Latino listeners have purchased a product or service after hearing an ad for it on a podcast. Moreover, compared to other media like YouTube, radio, TV, and social media, Latino listeners also report podcast ads as the least avoided type of advertising, while social media ads are the most avoided. And it's not just Latinos with high podcast engagement. According to the Black Podcast Listener Report, sponsored by SXM Media and Mindshare, Black listeners are more likely to engage with podcast advertisers than the overall U.S. Weekly Podcast listener. After hearing an ad on a podcast they listen to, 61% of Black Weekly Podcast listeners recommended a product to a friend or family member. 68% gathered more information about a company or product, and over half purchased a product or service. All of those figures are higher than the percentages among the total U.S. weekly podcast listening audience. If you bought podcast ads to connect with Black and Latino listeners this holiday season, you are probably benefiting as we speak. If you didn't, well, there's always room to add another New Year's resolution to your list. Thanks for watching and happy holidays. Laura, did you notice the fire he had on his screen in the background? Yeah. <laughs> very we, cozy. Very cozy. Yes. We appreciate Gabe's holiday spirit. Very nice. Thanks, Gabe. <laughs> uh, it's only appropriate uh, that our Gen Z colleague shares this finding about younger podcast listeners. Um, she interviewed Gen Z and Gen Alpha podcast listeners for these studies that she's about to highlight. She also keeps us Xers, speaking for myself, and millennials around the office up to date, speaking for you, um, up to date with the latest things. So with point number one, here is Salma. Hi, my name is Salma Ali, and I'm a manager of research here at Edison Research. Kids are engaged podcast listeners and grow into loyal adult listeners. That's one of the top findings from 2023. 
This year, we released the first ever Kids Podcast Listener Report from Edison Research and Kids Listen, sponsored by American Public Media, Disney Podcasts, Tumble Media, and Wondery. This research was especially important because it allowed us to measure for the first time just how many children in the U.S. are listening to podcasts. And it turns out, it's a lot. 46% of children aged 6 to 12 in the U.S. have ever listened to a podcast. 2023 also saw the first ever Gen Z podcast listener report from Edison Research and SXM Media. In this report, we learned that the age a person starts listening to podcasts can influence how often they listen. Among the Gen Z monthly podcast listeners, we saw that those who started listening as children now spend an average of three hours more with podcasts than those who started later in life. Impressively, 32% of those who started with podcasts as a child listen for 10 hours or more in a typical week. Gen Z and Gen Alpha are the first generations to grow up with podcasts, and we're eager to track how the podcast audience evolves as these audio-heavy generations grow up. So we're almost done. I know that was number finding number one. We promised 10 findings, but I'm going to throw in one more. Uh, to, because today is a special day, Laura. Did you know? What is today? What is, t- what is um, special about today other than this webinar? Uh, it's December 13th, um, also known as Taylor Swift's birthday. Happy birthday, Taylor. So here's the 2023 bonus finding Taylor's version. So uh, Edison Podcast Metrics allows us to look at podcasts on the show level, including reach and demographics. So according to Edison Podcast Metrics, the podcast, New Heights with Jason and Travis Kelsey, has seen a four and a half times increase in the number of weekly podcast listeners age 13 plus reached by the show since the Taylor and Travis pairing became public. Um, and that's just part of the finding. So a dramatic increase in the number of listeners. The other part of the finding is that now 50% of all listeners, 50% of this much larger audience, they're female. Before the romance became public, um, it was a much smaller percentage, 32% women before Taylor. That's that's the Taylor effect, uh, right before your eyes in data. So for those of you who celebrate, it's a happy Taylor Swift birthday, birthday as well today. <laughs> well, a year of research can fly by when there's so much going on. So it's great to stop and reflect on this work. Everyone who joined today, thank you so much um, for doing uh, this reflecting with us. Um, And as a special thank you to those who stuck it out to the very end of this webinar, we have something special for you. Now we get to see who gets this fabulous prize, Sound Data, the State of Audio and 50 Charts for Medicine Research. Laura, Sylvia, who am I shipping this to? Hello. All right. I was just making sure this person was still with us in our list. We randomly selected a participant here and um, Sam G. I'm going to say this wrong. Gertan, G-U-E-R-T-I-N, is our winner. Thanks for joining us, Sam. We'll be in touch. We'll reach out for your mailing address and send this along to you. Congratulations, Sam. Um, And don't worry, we'll have information for those of you who might want to secure your own copy. Um, If you haven't already, please subscribe to our weekly insights email. Um, Those on the list will be the first to know when it's ready to go. I feel like I have to give a shout out to the whole team behind weekly insights emails. Um, And those of you who help compile compile those insights into a book, thanks for all of your hard work. Thanks for getting those insights out into the world. Um, If you've been enjoying these weekly insights, please share it with others. Um, We'll continue our commitment to pulling new interesting findings every single week in 2024 for you. That's right. And we're not finished yet. There are two weeks left in 2023. So we have new findings coming for you next week and the following week. You can also visit edisonresearch.com um, for an archive of those findings and you can view the videos from today. Oh, and of course, thank you to all of our clients and sponsors uh, for contributing to all of this research throughout the year. There's no Edison research without you. So thank you so much. Um, I think that includes our last webinar of 2023, right, Laura? Um, That's it, Megan. That's a wrap. Happy holidays, everyone. Thanks, everyone.